Hare Krishna. Question, when many Hindu temples don't allow non-Hindus to even enter, then can the Vedic tradition be considered all that inclusive? Answer, I take this in three points. First is historical, then there's comparative, and then finally there'll be uh, philosophical. So from the historical perspective, the reason why non-Hindus are not allowed into temples, say the most famous example could be Jagannath Puri, the Lord Jagannath Temple in Puri, that is that because many of these temples have been vandalized, desecrated, destroyed, and even the devout, be they temple priests or other visitors to the temple, have been slaughtered. So, and these are not events that have been that have been done by Hindus. So there are non-Hindu aggressors who did these things and some, some of the temples have been vandalized and victimized repeatedly. So to have as a defense measure to prevent uh, the, or minimize the possibility of such vandalization, uh, the, play, the security measure has been put in place. Now, of course, for everything that is being done, something can be drawn from tradition, something can be drawn from scripture. But historically, it is this that has been the primary cause of the restriction of people to the ent to entry in the temples. And it is not many temples. It is There are thousands and thousands of temples across India. We could say they mean millions. Vrindavan itself has 5,000 temples. Uh, so more than that, you could say. So it's a few temples. Now we could say there are major temples like Jagannath Puri, Guru Ayur, Kashi Vishwanath. Yes, there are major temples because those major temples were what? Were primarily targeted by those who wanted to establish their religious supremacy and gain the, and plunder the wealth from the temples and terrorize those whom they considered to be kafirs to submit, convert, uh, so the point is that the very fact that these major temples adopted this policy and yet all the Hindu temples didn't adopt this policy points to the broad inclusivism of the tradition from which these temples have emerged. So it, if this were something coming from the central theology, then it would have always been there and all temples would have it. Have it. If it if it had been theological, then as soon as major temples started doing it, other temples would have started doing it. But, uh, but the very fact that in spite of many, not many, again, a few, uh, but important temples doing it, uh, all other temples have not adopted it, indicates the resilience of the inclusivist ethos in spite of the uh, repeated and severe attack by exclusivist religious tradition. Secondly, from the comparative perspective, it is not just some Hindu temples. If you consider the holiest place uh, for Muslims, Mecca, non-Muslims are not allowed at all over there. Similarly, uh, in the Parsi temples, non-Parsis are not allowed. And if we look at their own testimony, their own reason for this, in Islam, they say that they may give various reasons, like there's already congestion because so many people come during uh, Ramadan and the Hajj pilgrimage. But another reason they give is that the idolaters not, are impure. Now it's ironic that those who actually worship the deities maintain very high standards of cleanliness and purity. But they have those reasons. And we could say, isn't that demeaning to consider some certain people impure? Well, no, each religious tradition will have certain way of looking at things. And by their standard, they may consider some things to be impure. So if the Vedic tradition also follows that and says that we also consider that those people who are, uh, who are not following the broad Vedic faith because of their, because of their, especially their behavioral habits, especially from the perspective, the, the high likelihood that they will be 
eating cow flesh and cow is considered very sacred for lord jagannath and who is not different from krishna who is known as gopal then it is reasonable that such a such a rule be applied and thirdly actually if we look at it from the theological perspective just not allowing some people to enter a holy place of a particular religion does not make it at all exclusivist exclusivist is when the other people people who don't agree with one's own belief system are considered not just wrong or wrong headed but downright evil misled by the devil or even misleading others so that is not of the vedic world view at all the vedic world view is understand that everybody is a part of one family vasudai kutumbakam that everybody has the essential spiritual element in everyone panditah samadarshinah and that is why the because the philosophy itself is not exclusivist yes in terms of the practices required fostering higher consciousness there are certain standards maintained for purity but the philosophy is not at all exclusive the philosophy is highly inclusivist and most temples even in their uh, entry policies are highly inclusivist and yes there is there are many more contemporary expressions of these traditions uh, contemporary expressions doesn't mean that they are not following the tradition but they are aware of, aware of contemporary concerns and they are reaching out uh, to contemporary world so we could say the krishna consciousness movement is one example of that and that inclusivism in terms of not only allowing everyone to come to temple but inviting them to come to temple and uh recognizing that impurity even if it is present is not a permanent state so that if somebody becomes pure hearted not only can not only can the impure come to the temple but sufficiently those who are living purely can also worship on the altar so that inclusivism is manifested uh, at a, in a very dramatic way in the bhakti tradition and even especially the contemporary expression of the bhakti tradition so overall the point is that there is a very long and painful historical memory of the depredations that have happened and the reaction to that is understandable hopefully things will change and the temples may also allow others to come inside but the very fact that such temples exist also in, indicates the inclusiveness of the tradition that the inclusive tradition means that it should be able to accept those who are not that inclusive so if certain temples have a restrictive policy the vedic tradition can remain inclusive while accepting such non such not restrictive practices without adopting them entirely nor without condemning them in time and the fact that someone wants to reduce the vast and inclusive vedic tradition to just some samples and extrapolate from that indicates either that they don't they are not aware of the breadth of how the vedic tradition is being lived in today's world or they want to deny that evidence and therefore continue to believe a particular narrative not just uh, independent of the facts but in defiance of the facts thank you hare krishna